Good morning, Kingsley Community. Pastor Colleen Wehrman here coming to you with another daily devotion for Tuesday morning, May 17, 2022. Do You Believe This? by Emma Danzi, crosswalk.com. John 11, 25 through 26 says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and dies in me shall never die. Do you believe this? So this is Jesus speaking to Martha, sister of Lazarus, who has died. I am the resurrection and the life, Emma writes. There is only one person who ever resurrected himself from the dead. This means there was no medical intervention or intervention from others. Jesus himself brought his dead body, dead body back to life through the power of the Spirit. It is an important thought to remember that there had just been a cross. We would not be celebrating. It is because of the resurrection, the empty tomb of Jesus, that we have victory and life today. Webster's Dictionary defines resurrection as the rising of Christ from the dead or the state of one risen from the dead. When Jesus declared himself as the resurrection and the life, he was telling his disciples and the world that he was God and he was the Messiah that they were waiting on. It is because of his death and resurrection that we can all have eternal life. Although we are sinners, he bore our sins on the cross. Every thought, action, and simple feeling. He took on for us and placed himself... Uh, this they say punishment and judgment of God, and I don't, I don't believe that. I believe the reason God sent Christ to the earth was because of the love He had for the world. So Jesus did become sin for us, and there was some kind of exchange. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Jesus makes a promise that whoever chooses to believe in Him will have eternal life. Yes, the reality of death still very much exists. There is a hundred percent death rate in the world because of sin. However, Jesus brings the message of hope that even though we each must face physical death, we can spiritually be made alive in Christ forever. We will never be separated from God and his sacrifice covers everything completely to enter into his holy presence. Where's my blue? Come here. Do you want to come up here? Well, come up here and you say hello. Come here. Come over here. You're such a dumb. Come on. Come on. No. Come here. Come here. Come here. No, you. Come on. Do you want to come up? You want to be the grand dog of the day? Well, come up. Look up. Not Bean. Hey, Bean. Hello, Bean. Come on, Blue. Lucifer, come up here. Come on. Up. Up. Jump. Come here. Lucifer, come here. I'm trying to show you my grand dog. Come on. There's my grand dog. Say hi, Blue. Look it. Say hi. Oh, you dump. You quit licking me. There she is. Okay, get out. You stink. All right. It's my grand dog, Blue. We call her Blue Sipper because she's a heckian. Everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Jesus tells us that everyone who lives and believes in him will never die. He is referring to eternal life. Although we face physical death, we will never face eternal separation from God. I was once encouraged to think of sin like the distance between God, between the Grand Canyon from one side to the other. If God was on the other side, thousands of miles away, the gap would be too far to jump in my own efforts. If I can run and jump next to the best athlete, even though he would get closer to God, he still would fall short. In life, we cannot base our salvation on what we bring to the table. We cannot earn our way to heaven. A relationship with Jesus comes from believing in him, and that's the beautiful part. He wishes that all the world would come to know him. Do you believe this? This is the personal section of this message from Christ. He can tell us all day through the Bible that he is the way to having forgiveness and relationship with God, but we each must, we each have to come to a point of making a choice. He asked, do you believe this? Notice that Jesus said, do you believe this? He didn't say, you need to repent of your sin and believe. He said, do you believe this? So belief is what, is why it's a free gift. If we have to do something other than just take the free gift because we believe it is a gift from God, that is what um, grace is all about. Our faith Emma writes, cannot be piggybacking upon what our parents believed. It is not based on what the country and culture are we are from. It is simply the question, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Scripture says, if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, you will be in a relationship with God. Interesting facts. Interesting faith. Intersecting faith and life. Have you made a personal decision to know Jesus? If so, thank him today. If not, stop. What's stopping you from doing that today? Further readings. 
John 3, 16 and 17, Romans 10, verse 9, and Philippians 2, 6 or 11. So the cool story about Martha and Mary, you know, Mary was the one that sat at Jesus' feet while Martha was running around like a crazy person. Um, but there was a point where Lazarus, their brother, was dying and he was very ill. And Jesus got word of this and he decided to stay where he was for two more days. So um, when he got back to the home of Martha and Mary and Lazarus, Lazarus was already dead. In fact, he was two or three days in the tomb. He stinketh, as, as the um, King James Version says. And so Martha says, you know, if you would have only been here, you could have saved him. Now, everybody says, oh, Martha doesn't have any faith. And I'm like, mm, I don't agree with that. She did have faith because she said, if you would have been here, you could have saved him. But her faith wasn't deep enough to understand that God can do anything. And that means resurrect people from the dead. And that is the point he made to Mary or to Martha, because Martha and most of the Jewish believers believed in the resurrection of the dead. Once the Messiah came, he would raise them up from the dead on the day of resurrection. And Jesus is like, hello, I'm the dude. I'm the Messiah. I can raise him from the dead if I want. And so I'm going to show you that. And it wasn't just for Martha. It was from all the people that had heard Jesus was on his way. Because remember, the word is spreading about who Jesus is. So whenever he showed up, that's the other thing about Martha. Yes, she was busy doing stuff. But really, when Jesus shows up, is he just bringing the 12 disciples? No, he's bringing a whole crew of people. So somebody's got to make bread, right? And Mary's over there listening to what Jesus has to say. So somebody had to cook. <laughs> so Martha gets a bad rap. But anyway, so he wants to show her that it's not just on the day of resurrection when Jesus comes back where we'll have our heavenly bodies, um, where we'll, you know, where the dead shall rise out of the grave and um, those that are still on earth alive will be taken up with Jesus when he comes. So um, he's saying, I can do this now if I want because that's who I am. I am God. Only God can give life. That's the point. And um, only God can take something that was which was dead and bring it to life. And it's so funny that people don't recognize that, you know, when God is saying to Ezekiel through a vision, see those dry bones? I can put skin on them and I can make them into a human being because I am God. And so, you know, we're looking at Jesus saying, you know, you read about Ezekiel, Martha? Guess what? This is now that vision that prophecy coming to life. I'm going to bring Lazarus back from the dead. And he does. And um, out comes Lazarus. And he's alive. And interesting enough, after that um, raising from the dead, that was when the religious leaders have decided now they're going to start plotting for Jesus' life. Because as they said, quote, in the scriptures, since he raised people from the dead, people are going to believe him and not come to church anymore. <laughs> and then they won't give any money. And then how will we remember, how will we remain rich? <laughs> so a lot of things happened after that. But the point of Emma's devotional was that we are also raised from the dead. So whenever I do a funeral, um, I will usually use the scripture of Jesus saying, I'm the resurrection and the life. All who believe in me, yet Though they die, they shall live. So death is just a doorway. So if you've had loved ones pass, know that one day you will see them. It's a doorway. So I hope this was helpful and brought you encouragement today. Let's say a quick prayer. And i um, glad you got to meet my grand dog, Blue is her name. She is Lucifer. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today and we thank you for reminding us that you are the resurrection and the life. And that's not just for eternity. Of course, we believe in you. When we die, we will have new life. But it means that every single day, every day is a new day for us to give our heart to you and for you to stretch our faith muscles and um, bring us into a, de a deeper relationship with you. So I thank you that every day is Resurrection Day because we are Easter people. So help us see each day where you're bringing things that are once dead, broken relationships, um, broken world, where you're seeing it, where we're seeing it come back to new life. 
And so I just pray that each person will have the eyes to see that today. In the name of Christ, amen. All right, we'll see you later.